Welcome to another video. This is all about formative assessments and specifically this video is about quizzes. And quizzes is an online website that you can use and it's pretty easy and I love using it for formative assessments. This is a part of a formative assessment series that I've been doing. The rest of those videos will be linked down below if you want to watch them. Um, for now, I am obviously in a different location, so I apologize if the sound is a little echoey. I'm sure we all recognize the classroom echo. So let's jump into it. And just a note, this is a strategy for teaching students with disabilities. So just a reminder, the difference between formative and summative assessments, you can pause this video and read through these, this slide, but I did cover it in the formative assessment overview video I did. Then who may benefit from formative assessment? Really anyone benefits from formative assessments and a lot of students have formative assessments and check-ins with teachers on their IEPs. So check students' IEPs to see what they need. So let's jump into the formative assessment resource for today. And is, it is of course uh, quizzes. So first we're gonna go over a quizzes overview and then we're going to make and host a quizzes. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the quizzes student view. So let's get into that right now. So first we just wanna Google quizzes. It's Q-I-Z-I-Z-Z -I -Z -Z, and it's the first resource that comes up. And then after you make an account, you will be directed to a page that looks like this. You can, over here, you can create, and they have some options, a quiz and a lesson. This lesson is new, but it is really cool. It's a little like Pear Deck, if you know what Pear Deck is. And I actually did another video on Pear Deck, so if you wanna see that, it should be linked down below. I'm just plugging all of my other videos. Then you can explore and Quizzes, actually, you can look up other people's quizzes. If quizzes is. <laughs> if you've used Kahoot before, it's a lot like Kahoot in that way. There's different subjects, math, ELA, social studies, languages, science, all of this good stuff. Then you'll see you have your own library, and these are the quizzes that you've made. And then my organization, this is new. You can join your school and see what other teachers in your school are up to. Then you can view your reports. So after students take the quizzes, you will have all of these reports that will give you student data. And this is really helpful for formatively assessing your students because you're gathering data on what the students know. Then you can look at your classes. I don't usually use this feature, but you can link your classes to Google Classroom or you can create a new class in quizzes just for quizzes. And as you can see, you can do Canvas on the school and district plan if your school has a quizzes plan. Then of course you can go into settings and you can create some memes if you want to create some memes. Uh, we'll get into the memes a little bit later. You can create a collection. You can view your profile. This is what all of the other teachers see when they're looking you up. If you, all of your quizzes are public, they can use your quizzes quizzes. I'm going to say the word quiz a lot in this video. Hopefully it's not too overwhelming. All right, so let's work on creating a quizzes for our students. So we wanna to go to create quiz. Then you have to name the quiz and select any relevant subjects that you're making the quizzes for. So then it will take you to a page that looks exactly like this, where it gives you the option to teleport questions where you can add questions from the quizzes library or your personal library or you can just create a new question. And we have some options here. We can do multiple choice, checkbox where they can check multiple options, fill in the blank, a poll question where there's no right answer, an open-ended, or if you wanted to create a lesson, you could add a slide. Over here, we can add an image for our quiz, kind of like a cover page, and then we can change it to public or private, change the language, or change the time allowed. Here's where I always do this first. I always change it from 30 seconds to 45 seconds if it's an in-class formative assessment, or 
I usually do, I know this is excessive, but two minutes for homework quizzes assignments. Because a lot of my students have extra time on their IEPs, so check to see if your students have extra time on their IEPs for the accommodation section. Then you can add grades, change what subject you're doing this quiz is for, or you can import questions from a spreadsheet. This is really nice. And then it kind of gives you a checklist for how good, how professional your quizzes is. So let's go ahead and add a multiple choice question. As you can see here, you can type your question here, and then you can play around with um, what the text looks like. You can make it italic, underline it, bold. I think they have some colors. You can add superscripts and subscripts if you're doing chemistry or math or anything like that. You can obviously add accents. You can add a math equation, an image, an audio file, a video file. It's really flexible and it is really accommodating for all educators' needs. So if you are wondering if you can do math problems on here, you definitely can. And for the answer options, you have almost the same options, except for the audio and video. So you can add a math equation to the answer choices, or you can add an image, you can change the text color, add superscripts and subscripts, and change the text, um, text itself, uh, italics, underline, etc. You can also delete some of the answer options. And if you have a premium subscription, you can add a fun flat fact or explanation for the correct answer. And if you want to go back in and decide, actually this is a checkbox question or fill in the blank or open-ended, you can do that too. And then press save and then our questions will be saved. If this was a checkbox, it would look like this. Oh, I forgot to mark the correct answer. Answer choice one is correct. Or if it was a checkbox question, I could mark both. If it was a fill in the blank, and for the free version, you have to have um, is exactly, and then you can have two exactly right answers. All right, so I went ahead and made some questions, and these are a whole bunch of different types of questions. If you're doing a formative assessment in class, or even for homework, where your students are doing this quizzes assignment, you want to make sure that you have a variety of questions so that students are getting plenty of opportunities to show off what they know because if they're confused about a checkbox question if they didn't know that they could choose more than one option then that might not be showing what they know it's just showing what they know about the question format and that's not exactly what we want now it's hard to mess up quizzes like that as you'll see in a minute but just in case all right, so I have my quizzes done. Let's go ahead and publish it, and I'm gonna move myself actually, because the publish button is right here. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for part one. Stay tuned for part two. It should be posted on the YouTube channel right now.